Okay. So once we finish the detailing, uh, the not the detailing, but the reinforcing, as I mentioned, uh, we should uh, clear the drawing. So enforcement only here. It's quite important to do this. And uh, we either move all these sections in a drawing or we delete them. So there are two ways, either delete them or detailing of beam to have, a, to have it in another drawing. If I want to move these associative views in another drawing, so I keep only the reinforcement here, I can do it like this file and say copy move, uh, copy move elements between documents I'll say move OK and here I have to select the drawings I'll choose this derive, derive from building structure to have access to the right side and go to detailing of beam I'll hit OK Select elements to move to that. So these are the elements. Yes, uh, there were some reference as well. Okay, I don't want to move those. So I only want to move this one. So I'll say again, uh, file, copy, move, move to detailing of beam. It will redo everything. So what I did now was this. If I go in detailing of beam, I have those cross section I created. So not to delete them. But why I did this is quite important. I need here only to have reinforcement. Because if I respect this rule, uh, the program will run nicely whatever the size of the, your project or building or level of detailing. Now. I have this first uh, beam and uh, I will reactivate the structure and what I recommend for you always is to store per project the reinforcement cages. Why we would do this is because the moment we save in the library all rebars are automatically renumbered. So they get new position for each marks once they go in the library and come back. Should we need the same? Should we need the same? Uh... Okay, sorry. Uh... Okay, so um... we'll do like this: library project training. Uh, okay, engineering, no, necessary engineering, but uh, minimum reinforcement, whatever, create beam cage. And here we say insert symbol filter, still great. Okay, uh, and now I have to pick up a point. I can choose this intersection of grid. Dumb symbol. Let's say beam type 1. Okay. Why I'm doing this is because now when I move it here, these marks are new. So in this beam, I have new rebars. This is good from point of view of modification. If I start doing modification, I'm sure that the first one is not affected. If I want to have only one detailing sheet for the two beams, it's uh, no problem. I just renumber them or I just copy this uh, cage. So in this situation, the spans are almost the same uh, except here for instance here is something else it's another beam we have different spans so i have to adapt here this is another type of reinforcement so i will work now on this one i'll say create section 
or create an elevation view I'll say text, dimension, lines, whatever clear a bit the drawing and here we have a different situation so that reinforcement doesn't work anymore but the differences are not that dramatic so for instance here I, I think it's a beam that's missing or what's happening here I see here a beam bar display okay a beam seems to be missing in between these columns maybe this is what happens in reality here so here we don't have a beam is this uh, correct or no no uh, then what happened here we have a shorter beam okay it they overlap too so we can see here that in this situation there's a beam uh, but it's uh, shorter it's good for what we are doing for example because this is the advantage of working in 3d we understand what happens so this is the line of the beam so basically now we have to adapt the one example worked but the second doesn't work and the adaption is pretty much the way I created the first. I have this, so I do the offset with the concrete cover, place the rebar here, and then move. Here uh, we will just move within this column. Right. Filter only the reinforcement to make sure I don't pull by mistake the beam. Hold shift to make sure I'm orthogonal. And then here I will steal a rebar from here and place it here so it won't uh, take much time to finish the job. Uh, here it's the same situation. So mainly this is the workflow uh, of how I adapt. But it's easier than starting from scratch because uh, the reinforcement is quite tricky here there are additional bars which end at some length so it's quite easy that I just adapt what I see here uh, so here will be also shorten the rebar And with the stirrups, the same idea. Here we have a, an issue. We have to break the placement. You see, if I say shift click on this bar placement, uh, it will select the entire placement. And I need here a special area. So the way I do it is just like yesterday. I hit move command so first move command I will move one width and then move it back it's just a trick of exploding the placement because now if I have shift click it will treat it as an individual placement area and uh, pretty much this is how we will uh, solve the issues um, I don't want to waste uh, time with repetitive uh, actions, as I'm sure you will exercise based on my movies. Right. Filter always. Hold shift and place it here. Okay, so in this uh, intermediate areas or the upper areas, if it's still V16, it's, uh, even if it's not V16, it doesn't actually matter. I can just do a copy of a rebar, place it, place it here. And 
and then do some modification on it. So uh, I can uh, do modification with the stretch. You see, I don't use many functions in all plan. Uh, mainly we can set with uh, shortcuts so uh, you can move faster than I'm showing. I want to show to see the buttons. That's why I don't use the uh, shortcuts when uh, teaching. Okay, but mainly this is the workflow. So it's important to create one first beam and then you use bars that are placed within that beam to solve all the other issues and adapt to different situations. Imagine that if you already import from older projects some steel cages for usual types of beams, let's say according to height or width, you can just pick up from your own catalog or database, library, and share it with the new colleagues that you might employ. So uh, you get faster results and with a good precision. They don't have to create every time the reinforcement. But the main advantages of 3D is the fact that all rebars will be according to the model. So there's no chance of detailing something that isn't there. It's not, let's say, faster if we think of just copying some 2D layout in 2D and thinking, but it's easier to avoid mistakes this way. And it's easier to control situation. You see here, I just pull these stirrups, I shift click on them and pull it here. If I decide that I don't want stirrups within this beam, I just hit delete first and remove these two. So everything is quite flexible and allows really precise uh, 3D modeling of the bars. And also we can check with this. So we can check with what happens with the other bars. Here uh, something happened we need to place. But uh, this is mainly how we we uh, recreate. So I can also save this new reinforcement cage and it will be the second beam. But the second beam, as you've seen, uh, took less minutes than creating the first one. And I think we can adapt for other projects that is similar. This is the workflow for beams for 3D reinforcing. You are also interested in detail. So we'll also have to cover those issues. Uh, do you think this is covered? Yeah, covered. Okay, so uh, next will be detailing of beam as per attach drawing. This is what we're going to do next. 